sticky scroll bar Oracle Apex. Uh, so the main issue here, as we'll see, is uh, you can't really move to see the extra columns that are there. So like you can use the center button, you can kind of just grab the text to move, but not that many users know that. But then, yeah, so kind of just stuck here, as you can see. And a lot of people complain about that, so they can scroll down and kind of do that, but when we say that as an option, they kind of get upset with us. I guess the, the last option here is uh, you can set the columns with that actions bar to like one or two. That way, kind of, it'll always show up. But uh, again, not a great option for the users. All right, so this is just the end result. Uh, basically, as you can see, the scroll bar was uh, just kind of sitting there. So you don't have to get to the bottom of the grid. So a floating scroll bar. So yeah, if that's what you're looking for, uh, you should uh, watch some of the rest. Let's start by opening a new tab and searching for the jQuery files with this search term. Uh, basically just jQuery flo floating scroll. Do the search term in the description as well if you can't type it in. But basically when you search, uh, these results have been pretty consistent for about the past decade. Yeah, so I usually click on the second link here. And then once you're in the web page, uh, you just scroll down a little bit and hit the download button. Once you have the zip, just unzip it. And you'll see these three files inside of it. Uh, we're only going to use the two, the CSS and the min.js files. Uh, the other one don't really need unless you want to like modify it a bit. All right, now go back to the Apex workspace and we're going to add those. Files. So we'll do that by going to the shared components. Click on the static workspace files. Now within the section, you'll see the green file button on the top right where you can add the file through there. So if you click that, uh, you can kind of just drag and drop the files that you just downloaded. As you're at it, you'll see this reference column here, and that's what you use to actually import that into your uh, project. All right, so this approach is just a kind of single page, quick, quick and easy one. So uh, in the top left of the like the page with your uh, interactive report, if you open that up on the right side and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the JavaScript URL file in the CSS URL, and that's uh, using the reference I mentioned previously. The next thing we'll have to do is add the dynamic action, and you'll do that by just right-clicking on the interactive report uh, region. And, uh, once it's created, you can just rename it. The next thing you'll check is just the one area. Make sure it's after refresh and uh, the selection of your interactive report region. So once that's done, you'll switch over to the true action and you want to change that to a JavaScript code <clears throat> and then within that you can paste this code snippet uh, I'll have it in the description that basically just appends the floating scroll bar to the uh, report all right with that done we'll save the changes we'll uh, come into the UI side and uh, test it out There does look like to be an issue somewhere. Let me go back and try to resave it. Let's go back and okay, yeah, I fixed it. So maybe just a quick little bug, but yeah. So we'll change a column in here just to see if the scroll bar stays. And yeah, as you can see, it does. All right. The uh, next thing we'll do is move this to the global page, just so you can kind of reuse it on different pages without having to kind of rewrite all that code. Um, so yeah, if you have one already, you can just uh, start from there. But what we'll do is go back to the previous uh, page we're on and uh, just copy over the scroll bar again, like that dynamic action, to uh, page zero. 
and then uh, just add in the jQuery selector since uh, if you don't do that it'll just come back over empty on page zero <coughs> and uh, the next thing after that you can just delete the dynamic action you had on that page and uh, we'll go back to the page definition and remove these files here as well and we'll put them just on the uh, with the application side so you just have to specify it once <coughs> to add the files on the application side you can hit the edit application definition button on the top right of just the like the application homepage uh, and then you'll see a few tabs where you can click user interface uh, and then on there you can kind of scroll down and you'll see similar just JavaScript CSS areas uh, where you'll place that uh, and then pretty much just whatever page you're on it sh loads up All right, let's uh, test it out and we'll run in the application again just on that page one and it looks like this first report is working and that second. One additional change that we made is for the executing the JavaScript code in that dynamic action. Uh, you can see here that the, uh, the code changed a little bit here where we're referencing the triggering element just to avoid unnecessary refreshes. So for this next one, we're just gonna uh, added like a custom CSS selector uh, so you can specify which interact report has the floating scroll and it's just if you have like two uh, reports on the same page and want to specify which one gets the floating scroll and uh, yeah so you'll see here I have the two reports and I'm gonna go in first and change the CSS class of the one I want with the floating scroll and then uh, I'll save that so the next thing we'll do is go back to the global page and change the when the dynamic action occurs by just changing the jQuery selector to whatever your custom CSS was. And then after that's done, we can just double check the true action looks good and then save it and give it a test. So I'm just going to let it load a little bit. And yeah, as you can see, the... Uh, the report on the left has that floating scroll and then the one on the right does not and that kind of matches where the CSS selector is so I, and then yeah so you'll see here on that second one it doesn't have it but let's add it in and give it a run and test it out again see if that uh, scroll bar pops up so I think we just have to give it a second to load and there it is so yeah so both sides right now have that floating scroll because they both have that uh, custom CSS the uh, one step farther with that just in case you want to make this easier for the team members I don't have to remember those CSS classes you can put this into the uh, like the template itself and then you can just let them know that if they want to add the floating scroll bar they can do like uh, just use the floating scroll bar template go into the uh, template region and search for that interact report one where uh, you'll have to copy it so if you hit that copy button and uh, fill in just the, the name and just save that change you'll get back to that uh, template list page and then once that's there you can go in and actually edit that uh, one if you scroll down a little bit uh, you'll see this uh, region here where you just kind of append the CSS class in place with the uh, the TIR our region one we uh, used previously. Uh, save those changes and then just one more thing to note like if you go back in there uh, you can see like the JavaScript and uh, CSS file URLs as well so you could also put those references in here instead of uh, in the application link global area. All right, so let's just switch back to the report, uh, go to the interactive region and uh, scroll down to the templates and just make sure that that new one is in there. And you can see it is there. And if you choose it, save it, run it, uh, you can see that that scroll bar is there. And then just uh, you can test it out a little bit.
as well. <laughs>